So what's up? This is your boy Robert Medley coming straight out of the Medley Media Podcast, the dopest podcast in North Carolina. Yeah, I said it. The dopest podcast in North Carolina. And today we got my boy in the building, a dope upcoming musical artist, bro. Be on the lookout for him. My homie, MKB. Yes, sir. MKB in the house, man. What's up with you? What's going on, man? Appreciate you for having me, man. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. All right, now, the way that I like to do it, man, I like to go through your entire story. So so tell me exactly where you're from. So I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, man, the Oak City, about an hour away from here. You know what I'm saying? It's... You know, it's a it's a it's a growing city. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is kind of moving there, coming from all different areas of life. You feel me? Just coming down there. So, yeah, that's where that's where I grew up, man. Okay, okay. Now, tell me a little bit about growing in, growing up in Raleigh. It's a lot of stuff that you see in every city. Like, you feel me? It's a big city, but it's also kind of small at the same time. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can turn the wrong corner and you done not bumped into somebody. You know? You know what I'm saying? But it was. You know, I, it was smooth for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always say this all the time. Like, I moved around from the north side to the west side, south side. I lived everywhere. I never was really just, like, stationary in one area. You feel me? So, it was cool, man. You know, just regular kid shit, just having fun. Okay, now, I heard somebody had said something about uh, Raleigh and Durham used to be connected. Or they Word. used to be, like, one city. I didn't know that. Yeah, they used to... They, I think somebody said it. It was, like, Raleigh-Durham. Word. And, and then they separated it from Raleigh to Durham. Somebody had told me that, like, a long time ago. That's crazy. I mean, I, I could believe it. I mean, shit... Mm. It's like, Durham, like, 30 minutes away, but it's mm. pretty much the same shit that go on. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's, I can believe it. Yeah, now... um like I, I still shoot some videos in Raleigh, but I used to hate going to Durham to shoot videos, man. Word. Yeah, because Durham is fucking dangerous. Yeah, it is. Like I was like, yo, I got to pack up, take my <laughs> my ski mask, every damn thing. <laughs> got to take a knife, every damn thing when I shoot yeah. videos up there, man. So yeah. yeah. So did you go to college in or high school? Well, of course you went to high school. Yeah. in Raleigh. Mm-hmm. Did you go to college up there in, in Raleigh or a funny story. I went to I went to Central, but it was only for like a month. It was during COVID. Oh, yeah. So I did I ended up leaving. I didn't really like it like that. But I did go to Central in Durham for okay. a little bit. Now Central is directly in the hood. Directly in the hood. Yeah. Like across the street. <laughs> like yeah. it's crazy. It's like, yeah. Oh, okay. Now yeah. what high school did you go in Raleigh? I went to Broughton in ninth grade and then tenth through twelfth I went to Wakefield. Wakefield. Yeah, out there past Perry Creek. Okay, I think yeah. I remember um. I think I remember playing him in football. Where? What high school you go to? I went to um, Thomasville High School. Thomasville. Tom, well, Thomasville and West Montgomery. Yeah. Word. Mm-hmm. But you may have played them. I don't know. I don't know if we played against them. Yeah. Yeah. This know. this is a long time ago. Yeah, I about to say I'm seasoned. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That was this class of um O three. Word. O three. Yeah. Hell yeah. Wow. Yeah, but what what we used to do when I played for Thomasville, we used to um, play teams that were out of our division. To get ready for our season, mm-hmm. like we were one A, you know what I'm saying. So we were a small team, but we were good. So we would play better teams than us, like like independents from Charlotte and shit like that. Like Word. like four or five A teams. Okay, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Just to get ready for the season that made us better. Like I, yeah. I think I think our coach wanted to say, okay, well, this will boost the confidence. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. So when you play against the smaller teams, yeah, it would be a breeze for us. So I, can I, think, that was, I think that was his mentality. I can shit. understand. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I can understand. Okay, now take take me through the music journey. Like, when did you start doing music? Mm, man, I, originally I started I started making music probably back in what was it twenty eighteen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was about twenty eighteen. I was a sophomore. I had just went. I had just left from Broughton, went to Wakefield. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was um, that's where I started my music journey. Like, just like I used to do freestyles on Instagram. I just remember one day I just propped my phone up. My mom used to have like a tall ass candle holder mm-hmm. in the crib. You know them old school candle holders. You put the candle in. It's like a long. Yeah. I used to put my phone in it, put it on top of the bed to align with my height, and I used to rap into the phone. So I started around there, like 2018. Mm. Then I didn't begin taking it serious until probably about 2020. Mm-hmm. Like around the time I was just getting out of high school, I was making a little more money. I started investing into like studio sessions and meeting up with different videographers, just doing the whole yeah. network thing. You know what I'm saying? My uncle's always been heavy in music and Raleigh as well. So, you know, it, it wasn't really like a hard transition, but I started taking it serious about 2020. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you remember your first time in the studio? 
Yes. Yeah. My well, first time in the studio, it was it, it, it had to be around like August of 2020. I went to a mm-hmm. studio called Post Pro Studios, went to go see this guy named Matt. And it was smooth, man. I didn't really know a lot about the reporting recording process though, so I was um I went in there and I had like four songs thinking I'm going to get them done in an hour and I got mm-hmm. a half a song done <laughs> and no yeah, mix. Like nothing. Pay him all that bread and got nothing. So I was just like, fuck it. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, that was my first time. In so, so, what kind of rapper are you? Are you, do you write or do you punch in? I write. Okay. I write. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're a writer there. And, and writing is good, but I be telling people, you know, like when they come here and record, I was like, yo, you got to have your shit together when you come in. Yeah. Like a lot of these young guys, they come in and they were like, yo, give me a beat off YouTube. And Hell yeah. They punch in. They punch in. It was, you can lit- tell. It was literally one guy that was here that took like an hour. That's crazy. To, to get a bar there. <laughs> That's it's like, crazy. It's like he couldn't get to the beat. And I was like, bro, you got to do it like this. Uh-huh. And he just couldn't like catch the beat. We was just talking about that. It's like, crazy. We was just talking about that on the way here. Like, you can tell the difference. Like, a lot of niggas mm-hmm. take pride in like, oh, I punch in, I punch in. It's like, nigga, I can tell you punched yeah. in. Like, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because everybody's not future. Everybody's not Lil Wayne. You feel me? The, so it's like, but do it work for you though. If it yeah. if you feel like it worked for you, cool. Yeah. And you know and and I've actually been in you know studio sessions with Stunner and Baby, and they can punch in. It's like it's easy Word. to them, you know. Wow. What I'm it comes easy to them. Yeah. But you know, like where I come from, it's like we used to have to write on paper, and you can hear the paper flapping in the mic <laughs> <laughs> when we're in the yeah. booth and shit. So mm-hmm. I come from that area, that era, man. So yeah, hell yeah. Now, do you remember your first rap? Mm. <sighs> I don't remember. I had so many of them. I don't remember my first one. No. Yeah. I, I asked everybody. I asked everybody that man. Like, Word. You know, like, what was they? The you know their first lyric or the what, first lyric? Yeah. Or what? Yeah. They got into the studio. Yeah. Man, I gotta. And actually, I want to recount that. I know you already kind of asked me the question, but I want to go back to my first studio session. Mm. That was my first studio session that I actually paid for myself. Oh, okay. I was in the studio before my uncle, my uncle Bree, and then my late uncle Corey. They took me to a studio. It was a crazy story because it inspired. That's what made me go pay for my own shit because I was there <laughs> with them. Him. My uncle Bree, he's still a recorder artist now, but back then he was more heavily into music. And he went, he had he had a studio, booked a studio session. Mm. These niggas, they took me to the studio. They didn't to keep in mind, this was my very first session, like mm. period. I never been in a studio. They take me to the session and they're like, This your session. Like you say you want to be a rapper. Like this had to be like 2019 and somewhere around there. Like, oh, you wow. say you want to be a rapper, like I'ma throw you in a stew. Mm. Little and little do you know, they didn't tell me that. That was gonna be my session though. Like they was having me work with the producer and make the beat and everything. At this point, I'm just taking beats off YouTube. So I go in there, spit this trash ass verse, and my uncle, the whole ride home, he pissed me off. He was just talking shit. He was like, "That shit was whack." Like he <laughs> he trashed the engineer. Ain't even going. That ain't even making the flash drive like that. Damn. Was whack. <laughs> So that was my first session. Yeah, I'm gonna put that out there. That was how my first session went. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. hey, it be like that sometimes. Yeah. It be like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I remember um, the first time in the well, first time in the studio, I was with my my homeboy Thomas, and we had like a little. It was like a Walmart microphone. Mm-hmm. It was a little stand up Walmart microphone. Yeah. Sound was garbage and everything, but the feeling of just making your own art was like, damn. Yes, sir. You know, I love this. Uh huh. <laughs> and I started to doing it out of my mama's patio. Like Word. when I had got my income tax, I got a computer and you know like a little microphone like this and shit like that. And it went from there to my apartment, and then now, boom, you know I have this man. So salute. It's, it, it's definitely growing pains though, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, salute. It's been a a minute where I you know I was. I was going to quit, man, for real, like, you know what I'm saying? And even though I don't do, like, the musical part anymore, you know what I'm saying, I still help people out with their their shit. For sure. And stuff. But, um, you know, and a lot of people don't know this. Like, if you look, you know, Metley Records up on YouTube, like, I used to have the label. Oh, word. And I used to have a, a lot of artists and, you know, put out a lot of shit, man. But when it comes to, you know, I guess rap artists, there's a difference between, like, a nigga that can rap and an artist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like an artist is, you know, somebody like you that puts money into their art and everything. But a lot of these guys that rap, they just do it just because, oh, I'm on a song, I'll let your friends hear it and everything like that. And I tell artists, like, what is your plan? Yeah. Like after you do a song or you mm-hmm. want to push it, then what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So 
it's like people spend money on you know the videos the the song or whatever like that, but they that don't spend money on marketing. Yes, that's where I was just about had, to say. That's where yep. you have to spend that bread at, yep. at marketing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like when that when I first met Baby, um, he had this one song out. I forgot. It, it was like a whole bunch of niggas outside. You know what I'm saying? Uh, was it Pull Up? I think yeah, yeah, Pull Up, Pull Up. Yeah, yeah, I remember a whole bunch of niggas yeah. outside, yep. all shirts off and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, hell yeah. I this, that. This, when I was um talking to him, he said that he promoted that song six times a day. Six times a day, just like putting it on his page and shit like that. Word. Most rappers, what they do, or most artists, what they do is they'll do it till there's no more views to be made, or they feel like, oh, damn, that's the peak. Yeah. 100 is the peak, or Uh 1,000 is the peak. No, you got to keep pushing it. And what I be telling artists, what's old to you is new to everybody else. Yeah. Like, it was a song that Trey Song and Gucci had out, um, and they did that, I think, in like 2006. Mm Mm-hmm. It didn't start popping until like 2009, 2010, and then the radio wow. picked up on it, and then it grant, it went traction. But it was on a mixtape yeah. at first. But yeah, it's like I tell artists all that all the time, what's older, you new everybody else. Facts. So something that you got in the stash, mm-hmm. yo, put it out. Put it out. You don't know what could hit. Facts. So something that you think is trash, you know. Say, the world might yeah. think is, is that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. exactly. And I, it's funny you say that, because I was just thinking about that the other night. Like It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. I was just listening to... A lot of my old songs that I had, like quote unquote old, maybe early this year, like sometime last year. Yeah. And I was like, yo, this shit's just hard. Like, why am I sitting on these? And I'm yeah. like, I'm about to, that's what I'm starting to do now is going back because it's like, I got the music and it might have been him or somebody yeah. else, my dad or somebody was telling me, like, yeah. you got enough music. Like, the music is not the problem. Now mm-hmm. it's the marketing. Yep. It's also. Getting visuals, it's networking, it's the mm-hmm. more business aspect of yeah. it than you making music. Because I can make a hundred songs easy, but it's like, what are you gonna do with those songs? You know what I'm saying? Like facts. what you're saying. So facts, facts. I agree. Yeah, and and artists need to go back to the old school of of promoting as well. Everything is at your fingertips right now, yeah. which is which is great, great. You know what I'm saying? But I come from you know writing on the CDs, getting out to these clubs, mm-hmm. and actually. Promoting and for sure you know what I'm saying getting in these females' face and mm-hmm. oh, listen to the music, boom, 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 boom. I remember I used to have when MP3 players used to first come out mm-hmm. and everything. Like I would go up to people, yo, listen to this. You know what I'm saying? If you like it, here, this is a CD with the song on it. Give me a dollar. You know yeah, what I'm saying? and it'd be fucking 19 songs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, but I'd be telling people like, yo, it's a dollar. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If you don't like it, throw it in the trash. If you like it, shit, you only spent a dollar. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, but I had a a mixtape out that I did. It was it's my last mixtape. It was called Ladies Edition. And it was nothing but R and B songs mm-hmm. from me and different artists. I sold five thousand of those. Wow! In it within a year. Within you know a year. Saying? You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't quit on it. Yeah. So every time I used to go out, I would go up to people eating in restaurants, and you know what I'm saying. And yeah. now, nowadays, you're like, nigga, what the fuck you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But back yeah. then, I was like, yo, it, it's 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 all about your delivery. Yeah. You know what I'm saying about how you approach people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, don't mean to bother you. I know you on you on a date with your lady. Boom, boom, boom. This is an R&B joint, and I would go to couples first. You know what I'm saying? Couples first. Yo, this is an R&B joint. Do listen to it. Yo, if you like it, boom, a dollar. If you want to donate more, boom, boom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And people just. Give me a dollar, really, to let you know, make me go away. Right. They like after they listen to the CD, you know, what I'm saying they'd be like, "Damn, yo, this shit is hot." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I met like one of my girlfriends doing that shit. Like she, she used to run a kiosk in Greensboro Mall, and I gave her the CD, and she was busy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like she didn't want to be bothered, but after she listened to the first track on it, she called me. Boom, had a conversation and everything, and it then led to a relationship. Wow, but that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's crazy, marketing one on one, people. Yeah, <laughs> for real, yeah, for real. Yeah, man. It's, but, okay. but it's, it's <laughs> for real. Yeah, let me let, let me give him the, <laughs> the time of day. Exactly. But yeah, man. Um, but yeah, that's how you have to do it. It's like you don't have to quit on yourself, but people just do the bare minimum and then expect for something to just pop off. Exactly. You yeah. know what I'm saying so. Yeah, man. So, Got to take your last dollar and invest it in yourself. We was just talking yeah. about that in the car before mm-hmm. we came in here. Yeah. If I got a dollar, I'm putting it on myself. Yeah. That's all I got. got you to, know what man. I'm saying? You. That's the only way it's going to work. You can't expect mm-hmm. no handouts. You can't, like you were saying, behind the scenes, like artists wanting stuff for free. Like, no, everybody got to get paid, bro. Everybody got bills. Everybody got responsibilities. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So it's yeah. about investing, man. It is. It is. Yeah. And, and I wish I would have learned that at an earlier age- like, you know, I come from a family where you got to play it safe. 
Oh, you gotta, you know, you gotta work a regular nine to five, and you know that's like my. It was just like, yeah, talking that's, about that's that. like that's how my mom yeah. and dad is, man. They were like, yeah. oh, get a good job, get any one of these meals, make twelve dollars now, whatever, like that. <laughs> you know, so I've never yeah. been that type of nigga, man. I've never been the type to just work a nine to five and have a clock in and clock out, which is that's cool, but you know, what I'm saying if you got a little bit of talent, I think everybody's blessed with some something. form. You know, what I'm saying something that can make them yep. money. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And I, and I tell my girlfriend all this all the time, man. Like she bakes cakes, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Yo, bet on yourself. Bet on yourself. Like you got talent. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Get out to these festivals and do shit. Do shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You never know what could work. Never know. You never know. You man. Never know. You never we was know. just talking about that. Yeah, bro. yeah. But if, just if you about if that. you don't do it, you know what I'm saying? You be sixty or seven. Like damn, I wonder what I you know what I could be right now if I would have took that chance at twenty. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah you, you gotta take a chance. You got to. Yeah, but getting back to you know what I'm saying, the you know, North Carolina and in in a whole, what is the culture? What do you think about the culture of Carolina music? I just think it's like it's that's a great question. We at like a standstill right now. Like I just feel like as a whole Carolina, like we don't really have our own culture, mm-hmm. so to speak. Like I know a lot of people are gonna be mad about that, but we I don't think we do. Like when you look at North Carolina, it's like a melting pot for all other cities to come to. When I go to Raleigh specifically where I'm from, there's niggas from New York, there's niggas that come there from Florida, there's niggas mm-hmm. that come from LA. Everybody's there. It's not just a certain thing, oh that's a Raleigh nigga. If I go to New York, they're not gonna be like, Oh, you from Raleigh, you a Carolina nigga. Like nobody says that. Like, yeah, yeah. feel me? Well, I went to New York and I'm asking niggas like, what do you think of when you think of North Carolina? Like my most mm-hmm. of my family's from New York. So I'm asking them, they like nothing, just like trees and country and shit. Like that's mm-hmm. what I think about. Mm-hmm. But it's like we don't have our own culture. Long story short, what I'm trying to say is I don't feel like I feel like that that is sort of like parallel to the music as well like our music doesn't have a feeling when you hear that you like oh that's carolina like that's they sound yeah. you feel me so it's nowhere to kind of like go back to you know what i'm saying like oh when all else fails i'm gonna revert back to this sound i know my city or my state gonna push me like yeah that's why i say i salute artists like even though a lot of niggas may not like the baby or baby or whatever mm-hmm. i respect that like i respect him and his hustle because yeah. to come from north carolina by yourself like like the way he did it and took it to the level he took it, I don't even think nobody's done that. Like, yeah, fast. you feel me? I mean, that's how I feel about it. Though I feel strongly because I always have people like saying like, "Oh, you you make a song, it may sound like New York, or you make a song and it may sound like Atlanta." And it's just like mm-hmm. that's where it seemed like the support is at. That's where yeah. it seemed like the industry is at. Not saying you go and you make a song directly sounding like a nigga, but it's okay to pull influence, especially when your own state don't have. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do you agree with that though? Do you feel yeah. like that? Like, cause yeah, if yeah, you, yeah. yeah. That's, good, that's, that's a good point. And I was gonna ask you. I was like, who you think made a bigger impact mm-hmm. on Carolina music, J Cole or Baby? And I asked a lot of artists this. Baby, I agree. You got I agree. to. I agree. Cause Cole didn't pop from here. Yeah, that he had to go to New York. He had to go to New York. Yeah, exactly. he didn't. Even though he rep North Carolina, mm-hmm. though he do rep and all his music he do. Cause I'm a Cole fan. He rep all. He reps Fayetteville all day. But yeah. If we talking about soul influence, you got to say baby. And you got to yeah. bring Stunner in that category too because he brought Stunner with him. And now all these niggas in Carolina that you might say is the Carolina sound. Like they yeah. sound like Stunner or they sound like baby. Like Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's one guy that I was talking to at a video shoot. Um, it was an older guy. And he was talking about baby. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't saying anything bad or anything. He was just trying to make certain points and stuff like that. And it was something that made me raise my eyebrows because like, you know, when Baby was, like, first started to pop, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, like, underground and everything. I think he had, like, 100,000 followers. That's when when I met him. Like, 100,000 followers, he was like, you got to think about it. Baby didn't pop off his music. Baby popped off of the the bullshit that he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To, yeah, you know I can see saying? that. Cause, see yeah, that. Cause, yeah, cause, he said that, too. Yeah, because yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he was like, yo, yeah. Baby, you know what I'm saying, his music was dope. You know what I'm saying? But he was just, you know, kind of known in the Carolinas and stuff like that. Yeah. He was like, if he wouldn't have, you know, pop that nigga or get into all those fights and do all that shit like that, he probably would be at a standstill. Mm-hmm. And I had to think about it. And I was like, oh, damn, I don't know. I don't know. Because, you know, you know, shit like that does, you know, entice people. You know what I'm saying? It entices, but you yeah. got to have something behind you, that you enticement. Do. You do. So you, you got to still salute it. Yeah. 
Exactly. Because to exactly. keep it going, you got to. It's a lot of niggas that you may say, oh, he killed somebody, or oh, he did this or did that. He went to jail. He just got out. But a lot of niggas can't sustain that mm-hmm. in the industry and then fall down and get back up. So that's why I respect yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Facts, facts. Respect facts. his hustle. And one thing that I can say about Baby, and, I, and I've and i told this before to anybody, that is the hustlingest nigga I've <laughs> ever been around, bro. Like this nigga, when I first met him, he was like, Mentally, let's shoot another one. You got time for one more? And before I knew it, we don't shot four or five videos in that one day. I was fucking exhausted. Wow. I thought I was a hustler. I was like, <laughs> and, and then on top of that, this nigga had to go to the studio that night and then catch a flight to, I think, Philly the next morning. Word. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, nigga, when do you sleep? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. but I, I tell people that, like, that's that's one thing that I do respect about Baby is that nigga's hustle. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, got he to. definitely has a hustle, for real, for real. Now, I salute it. Yeah. Now, if you was going to do, you know... um, like your dream feature, mm-hmm. what would it be? Mm. Dream feature? Yeah. Uh, I could say Drake. That's just like okay, like like that's the cliche answer. Mm-hmm. Um, dream. The, the dream? No, 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 not oh, dream. I'm okay. just saying like the dream feature. Oh, okay. I'm thinking out. Oh, 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 like, okay. <laughs> nah, hell no, nah, he don't though. But I mean, <laughs> nah, I mean, I feel like. My dream feature, I feel like it would be with a pop star, like somebody like Taylor Swift or okay. fucking Beyonce or Katy Perry, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I ain't yeah. got I ain't got that answer before when I yeah. asked I asked all this. And that's dope. Yeah. I'm trying to yeah. like, that's the level I think. Like yeah. I don't think like that's the thing. Like I'm trying to get to a different level, man. Like, especially if people go and listen to my music on all streaming platforms, you will see like I make all you can't box me into it's yeah. not a genre of music I can't make. Yeah, facts. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just and it's not even boasting. That's just facts. Like mm-hmm. anybody will vouch. I make anything how I feel because I don't feel the same way every day. I don't think anybody does. Yeah, facts. So one day I might wake up and I feel like this. Another day I might wake up and I'm pissed off. I want to make this type of music. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why my horizon is so big when it comes to working with artists because it's like, you know, I can do. I feel like I can do anything that I put my mind to. Okay, real shit. And that's dope. Like, where do you think you would be? Like just the kind of artist that you are, what, what do you think you would be more comfortable at? You would be underground, you know, what I'm saying the rap charts, or you want to cross over pop charts? Cause that's what a bread at. I was just charts. about to say, <laughs> I want to cross over, bro. Like yeah. I don't. If you want to be underground, or you just want to be a nigga that's known in your city, that's cool too. Like it's about where you want. Cause like this is kind of like off topic, but it's kind of like oh, you good. Place. My my grandpa, for an example, he's a successful insurance salesman. Mm-hmm. Not a millionaire, but a successful insurance salesman. Yeah. Makes six figures easy a year. He told me out of his own mouth, he said, I'm comfortable with making six figures. I don't want mm-hmm. the millions. I yeah. could if I wanted to, but I don't I don't want them problems. Like I don't want that's not where I wanna go. Cause you know with each mm-hmm. each level there's a new devil. It's always yeah. gonna be more money, more each problems. Each level there's a new devil. Yes. I love I that. Yes. I love that, bro. I'm telling you, that's facts. Damn. Each level, it's a new devil, man. So you gotta, you feel me? You got if you're comfortable being an underground artist, then you cool. But if they you know when you decide that you want to cross over, you gotta understand it's a different level of work, it's different rooms you're gonna be in. Mm-hmm. So you gotta be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Facts. That that is a fact. Yes, Damn, sir. That that was a that one's yeah. definitely going on the real right there. <laughs> East level is a new yeah, level, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I'm I'm gonna just do it step by step. So you say you know Drake or you, Taylor Swift or somebody or uh-huh. you know what I'm saying who would produce the beat? Who would produce the beat? Mm-hmm. Mm, who do I like? I love production. Um, I'm a, This is like weird. I'm gonna say Metro Boomin though, because Metro he he can make any beat too. I didn't any beat. I didn't heard him make crazy shit for all different type of artists so I'm like I feel yeah. like he could do a pop record and still have it give it that hip hop feel kind of a little bit or like that mm-hmm. so it ain't too too pop but it's like it's still you feel me yeah 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 like kind of what he did with The Weeknd and 21 Savage and shit like the fact that he can curate them type of artists I feel like he would be able to get a, a rap artist like myself and then get a pop artist and make it sound authentic facts facts yeah okay now if you if you was gonna do a feature with somebody you know around North Carolina or like a Mm-hmm. Uh, underground artist that you know, you know, whether it's from Atlanta or somebody that's, you know, you see this about to pop, who would it be? Mm. An underground artist that I really want to work with. Mm-hmm. Somebody that's up and coming that you see the traction. That I see the traction that I want to work with. I, I don't know. I don't know who I would want to work with from that's local 
I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm putting on my bro. This is my guy, Trizzy Bands, right here. Y'all can find him on all streaming platforms. That's Trizzy right. Bands. I got my bro, Mari Bands. <laughs> we the Bands gang. <laughs> bands gang. <I'm> t- <laughs> my brother, Mari Bands. Trizzy Bands. Damn, my brother, Mike Self. Like, mm-hmm. these is niggas that I think y'all should go listen to, feel me? These are niggas that I've worked with, that I enjoy working with. That's right. uh, I really can't name, like, no shade, no shade to nobody, but I just... It ain't coming to me right now. Yeah, facts, facts. Yeah. Okay, now how long y'all been doing music like the the main games? Uh, it's not really the band's game. Oh, okay, I know, but I just, you just, just saying it yeah. though. Okay, um, <laughs> I let him explain for himself. You want to tell him how long you been doing music, bro? Yeah. Man, I've really been in the music my whole life, but I probably just started about the same time as him. Cause first I was really mm-hmm. into basketball, like yeah, yeah, I was facts, into facts. sports. Yeah. Then after that, I'm probably say like 2020. Okay. But I ain't really been consistent. I ain't really <clears throat> been actually putting myself out there. So something I gotta still be working on, but he behind the scenes, he's merchandise. Okay. okay. That's his lane. He got his own clothing yeah. line, man. He got it on right now. Okay, cool, cool. Sir, beyond normal. Be and on the lookout. And that's and that's one thing that I like, man, when it when it comes to teams, you know what I'm saying? I've I've been a part of teams where like everybody wanna be fucking LeBron James. And that don't work. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has to have you know what I'm saying? Nobody, everybody can't be the leader. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when I first started the studio, I started with two guys and everything. And I've always been the type, yeah, if, if it works out, yo, that's great. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to always put my, myself in a position to do it alone if, you know what I'm saying, shit goes left. You know what I'm saying? That's just the same thing with relationships. Yeah. I hope it works out. But, but I'm going to put myself in a position where I can pay my bills and shit. In case you know my chick leave or somebody leave, mm-hmm. and that's how it always been, man. It's like everybody wants to be the leader, and I'm like, no, we all got to do something. Yo, I'm I'm real big on cleaning here, and with my guys here, I'm like, yo, y'all got to fucking clean. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Facts. Because the pre- presentation is everything, and yeah. I'm telling them that. Yeah, and the way that you clean here, I was like, I know your fucking house dirty. <laughs> I was like, yo, just the way I was like, yo, you, yo, fuck that. <laughs> Hell so, yeah. So yeah. the people that I started with, man, it's like they're gone just because they don't have the same mentality that I do, mm-hmm. which I'm still cool with them. I don't hold on against them, but when it comes to business, you can't, can't do it. it. You can't sit at my table. Yes, no, sir. No, I agree. For real. Sure. For real, for real, man. Hell yeah. yeah. So what's next for you? Like, what, you know, what do you have coming out like for? Right now, I'm just really making music, man. I'm letting life inspire me. I'm really big on like... Even if I'm not inspired, I'm going to stay consistent because I believe consistency breeds inspiration. Yes. So you stay consistent, the inspiration going to come at some point. So I'm just really making music right now, man. I'm big on networking right now. Mm-hmm. That's why I came out here to do this with you. You know what yes, I'm saying? Just putting my face. Yes, sir. Putting my face everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. everybody going to see me. Everybody going to have a good thing to say about me. Maybe not, but... Hey, that's on them. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody, I just want to put myself in front of everybody. That's really what I'm doing right now and really pushing all my music. I don't have a single in particular right now that I'm pushing, but just my music as a whole. Like I'm just working on content and networking. That's really my biggest thing right now. Okay. Yeah. Now, now since you've been um, <clears throat> being an artist, excuse me, um, what's like your, I, want, I don't want to say your best song, but what's the song that means the most to you and why? Mm. Song that means the most. I might gotta take a second. Um, <laughs> that means the most. It's hard. Like it, it. I heard a uh, analogy one time. It's like all of my songs are kind of like my babies. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's like you can't pick. Well, some parents probably can, but yeah. you can't pick your favorite child to say which child means the most to you. They yeah. all were different points in my life where at that time they meant the most. So it's like. It's hard to put, you know what I'm saying, one over the other because I got a bunch of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Now, now when it comes to parents, my mom used to always tell me that I was her, <laughs> I was her best baby because I never talked back. Like, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, my yeah. brother and sister, they would they would talk back a little bit. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? But me, I never, I, even when I knew my mom was wrong, I was like, okay, mama. All right, <laughs> yeah. I understand. That's what you understand. <laughs> yeah, I still to this day, I don't, yeah. I don't give her no lip. I was like, all right, mama. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, True. man. Okay. True. Now, was something else I was going to ask you, too. Oh, mm-hmm. with all this stuff that's going on with Diddy, what do you think about that? Diddy, goddamn. I be asking artists. <laughs> hey, I want to hear it. Damn, man. Baby oil. <laughs> Baby oil is a thousand bottles is crazy. I don't know, bro. I just feel like, man, like, it's just like, I feel like 
I mean, I'm not into conspiracies, but I just feel like this nigga been doing this shit for a long time. And I feel like even before, I, I was born in 02. So mm-hmm. this nigga's, day, he been doing shit since the 90s and just mm-hmm. in hip hop culture alone. So now that he doing all this other shit, it's just like, I wonder why it's now. Like, why is it coming to the light now? Like, it's, and he it's, being exposed. Yeah, it's it's like a fuse, man. Like when Cassie came out with that shit. Yeah. And then, I, I'm not going to say it was a, it was a mistake, but for him to settle so fucking quickly, yeah. he settled within 24 hours. Yeah. So it's I like- heard he didn't even want to settle at first. Yeah, I heard yeah. she had to come out with some information for him to be like, oh, right, yeah. let, me, let me chill. Probably yeah. did. She, she, she probably know every damn thing <laughs> about Yeah, it. hell yeah. He was like, hold on, take this little quick loan. I don't even know how much you yeah, gave him. I think it was like, <laughs> like 30 million. Yes, damn. 30 million. Yeah. <laughs> In 24 hours. Ooh. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, she knew some shit. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. 30 million, damn. Yeah. Oof. And and like my take on it, like I said, you know, nobody knows what happens behind closed doors. Like we have the, you know, everybody that's doing their interview and stuff like that. But we know that these females will come out the woodwork, you know what I'm saying, to yeah, get a quick bag. They will. For real. They will. They will. They will. You know what I'm saying? And don't nobody know for sure. Like, you know, a lot of people have talked about Diddy's temper and anger. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I've always been told you know the more money you have it makes you a bigger person than what you already were yes so if you're an asshole it's gonna make you a bigger bigger asshole asshole. yeah exactly if Mm -hmm. you're giving it's gonna make you more giving Mm -hmm. and everything so you know i I really don't know i'm I'm anxious to see what's gonna come about it Mm -hmm. and everything but you know the feds don't kick in your door for nothing man they they got to have some shit already yeah they know something man diddy ass bro i think Tripping, bro. Like, I, right, bro. Like, yeah, that's wild. Okay, now, now, a question. Mm-hmm. All right, would you have went to a Diddy party? Hell no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, not the sexual part. I'm about to say, not the sexual part. <laughs> see, I was about what, to say see, every, like when people, party. when people, no, when people think, no, of, Diddy, <laughs> when people think no. of Diddy party, when hell people no. think of Diddy party, they think of the freak offs just because it's it's what's Man, everybody saying. Right yeah, now. that's the big thing right now. Yeah, but you got to think about it. Diddy threw parties and every fucking body was there. Anybody that you want to be in contact with. Yeah. Producers, engineers, other artists, Man. shit like that. So that's what I'm talking about. Man, shit. <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> I don't want to say, bro. Like, nah, that's a set up question, bro. I mean, because even if you do, but I just feel like, man, it ain't shit. I feel like that mention so damn big. Like, this nigga, what the fuck? What you need a hundred foot bed for? You seen that on Instagram? He had like a the big ass California King bed yeah. in the backyard. I'm like, bro, like, what type of party? Is this a music party? Like, what the fuck is going party. on? In a bad party. But you got you to gotta think about it. People throw these these parties. What's that? The white dude that throw Michael these, Rubin, Michael Rubin, the white party. If if something came, if Tommy yeah. came out ten years from now and said that he was doing some shit and everything, I was like, yo, everybody in their mom was at that party. Everybody in their Every, mom was. Everybody at wants party. to be at that party. Yeah, right you now. do the all white party. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you got football players, basketball, anybody that's everybody. anybody's there. Yeah. So that's why I be telling all this, like, yo, would you would have went to a Diddy party, man? <laughs> so, yeah. I feel like. Man, I can't say yes, bro. Like, but I just feel like it is good. If you, if anybody wanted to go to a Diddy party, do you? That's fact. You can go to a Diddy party network with all them niggas. I'm chilling. I'm not going to a goddamn Diddy party. Uh, yeah, Diddy. Yeah, yeah. I can't, man. I just, I can't align myself with. It's just got. I got certain morals, man. It's just like, and nothing's proven yet. But like, yeah, fast, fast. Oh no. Yeah, I'm. But man, when it when it comes. Yeah, with, to network, hell yeah, to, to network. Yeah, I to definitely network. would. Now, now I heard something on a uh, Vlad. Uh, what's that? The, the actor he had said something like Diddy called him in in the middle of the night and was wanting him to come over there and everything. And he was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, who over there?" And he was like, "Just me." <laughs> and she I was like, and, and Vlad was asking. Vlad was asking. Him, he was like, "Yo, would you would have went?" You know, what I'm saying he was like, "Well, if it was about business, I definitely would have went." And everything, but nah, if something is, I know creative minds go at two, three, four o'clock in the morning, because mine do. Yeah. Like, I'd be up here, and I'll, like, I'll tell my engineers, oh, yeah, I need to talk to you about something. Can you come up here? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if they out, they'll come up here. But with that kind of reputation that you have, it was like, I don't know how something that Take place at three in the morning. Can't wait to nine a.m. More man, time. yeah, that's what I'm that's saying, that. bro. Hold that thought, man. Yeah. Hold the thought, bro. I'm yeah. chilling. It's three o'clock, nigga. Go to yeah. sleep, bro. I see you in the morning, bro. But, but okay, let's 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 do us another another scenario. Like what? Jay Z. 
Mm-hmm. If Jay Z two in the morning, and he was like, "Yo, I just got finished with a party. I'm finna go to the studio. I need you to pull up. I need to talk to you about some business." Man, you know people say your reputation precedes you. Yeah. So it's like, it's reputations, man. Like it's just like, bro. If all I know about you is fucking freak offs <laughs> and goddamn fucking all type of wild shit, like it's just like, why do I want to come and talk to you about business at three o'clock in the morning? But Jay Z, I don't know him for that. Yeah. I know him as the mogul. Yeah, true. So it's like, and I ain't never heard no real crazy, crazy shit about Jay Z, not like that. So it's like, yeah. It's like, it's like people are find some shit. I guarantee you, if if something came out about Jay Z, mm-hmm. like with a, a girl and he had to pay up or whatever like that, mm-hmm. stories would start coming. Story, so yeah, stories would start coming. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it, you you got to think about it because nobody said anything about Diddy until this came out. Mm-hmm. But Diddy was like, it was like some people saying like Diddy was like very feared back in the day. Like when he hit uh old boy up in the head with a bottle or something like that. Mm-hmm. The the I think it was the di- director or the producer of the Nas video that he did, Hate Me Now. Mm-hmm. It, he was supposed to take something out of it and he didn't. So he smacked him on the side yeah, of the head with yeah, a bottle. Yeah, he yeah, he, he, smacked he that nigga. I mean Yeah, so it's reputation, bro. Like I've been hearing shit about Diddy. I be watching a lot of like Vlad interviews, and you know Gene Deal, his security yeah, Gene, guard. Yeah, Gene Deal, yeah. Watching them videos, it's like, bro, these mm-hmm. niggas. But it's just like my only question is, why do y'all wait till now? Like, yeah, exactly. Why do we not hear these stories? Yeah. This happened in the nineties, like mm-hmm. Tupac shit, the Biggie shit. Like, why do we? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been floating theories, but nobody's ever like pressed the button on it. Yeah, it's been like the the the, the most kept secret. Like, yeah, but it's like why? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But That's you, the, you, I ask myself. But you got to think about. It, man, it's like this street code. Like I was brought up in that street code. It's like you see something you do not tell. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You don't tell. Which, which is, I think, is the stupidest shit. You know what I'm saying? At a, a sense, because it's like, okay, if something happened to one of your family members, oh, I'm, I'm not gonna say something. Yeah. Or if I see a girl getting raped, I'm not gonna say nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it's, it's kind of like that. But that's the way I was brought up. Like I remember I got slapped by my dad one time because I told on a guy. That's crazy. He slapped the shit out of me. <laughs> that's he was like, wild. "Yo, you keep your fucking mouth shut." That's what he told me. Cause he was like, "Yo, if you tell, you know what I'm saying, niggas will kill you over some shit." You know what I'm saying? So I think my daddy was trying to like embed that. I don't. I don't think he meant like don't say anything. Yeah. But you know, say he was trying to, I guess, boot because my dad was out in these streets. So. Man, yeah, man, it's like that. Tr- bro, look, if we talking about street code, I come up in a different era. Mm-hmm. Niggas are snitching left and right now. <laughs> but I'm raising my son to be a citizen, a citizen, citizen a yeah. civilian. Yeah, and anybody you. who know anything about no real about the real street codes, is civilians do not go by the street code. They yeah, don't yeah. go by the G code. If you didn't participate yeah. in any of this mm-hmm. that we got going on, why am I expecting you to keep your mouth shut? Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I can understand a street dude trying to tell his son, like, mm-hmm. not slapping the shit out of him, but like, like <laughs> fuck out of me, bro. But, but telling him, like, don't do that. Because like, in his life, he's like, those come with serious yeah, consequences. Yeah, consequences. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but me, I ain't raising my son like that because I'm not mm-hmm. like that. So it's yeah. like, I'm not raising him like that. Yeah, yeah, and and where we come from, man, it was it's it's nothing but hood. So it's like, yeah, like I facts. know he, I know he was trying to prep. Exactly, me. I knew I didn't know it at a young age, but as I grew and kept shit to myself, I was like, yeah, he's trying to say yeah. him this. But you right, you know what I'm saying? You definitely, if you don't live by that G code, you definitely have to do what you have to do. Fuck it, you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, man. Um, Give your Instagram, your social media, shit like that, where people can find you. Yeah, y'all can mm-hmm. find me on all streaming platforms under MKB, all social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Prod MKB. That's P-R-O-D-M-K-B. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm everywhere with it, man. And YouTube, SoundCloud, everything you can think of, I'm there. Okay. I'm there. And uh, I want to I wanna go on one more question, man, before we uh, we uh, go out. Okay. Your, and I ask every artist this, too. Five-year plan. What is your five year plan? If you had to make a guideline of things you want to do in five years to get to wherever you want to be, you know, what would it be? Work. That's the only thing in between me and what I want is just working for it. Working. Anything that I don't have, I just ain't went and got it yet. But my five year plan is, mm-hmm. as I stated earlier, continue to put myself in these rooms, mm-hmm. make my face visible, make myself rememberable with people. Um, and that's really what I'm on now, man. It's just is is marketing. I'm gonna keep nice. making dope music, making different music. You know what I'm saying? Experimenting and pushing the boundaries with all the music that I do make, taking my time and mm-hmm. you know, also just like 
more of what you said earlier, promoting and marketing and hitting these streets and, and making um relationship with the people who make shit move, people like yourself, videographers, DJs, um, just event curators, party promoters, like all these people who make stuff move in your surrounding area and even other areas. Like I'm about to start traveling up and down the East Coast. I've been big on traveling this year. Mm-hmm. I went out the country for the first time this year. Like, What's up? yeah, so I've been, you know, just big on traveling and networking even outside of your own state. But that's what I'm going to start with right now. But over the next five years, definitely, I just see myself doing a lot of marketing um, and content branding and, and things of that nature. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And what about yourself, brother? So really, man, I just see myself pushing my clothes right now. Mm-hmm. Got my clothing brand. Y'all can find this on all uh, social media at Beyond the Normal. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just trying to get this going. I see myself putting my clothes in stores, doing it like that. And uh, yeah, that's really all I got. And how long you been doing your clothes? Man, I've been doing this for like three years. Really, these last two years is how I've been moving the, uh, moving the strongest with it. But mm-hmm. yeah, I've been doing this for a little while. I've been doing okay. It with it. Okay. And how old are y'all? How old are y'all? I'm 22. 22? 25. 25. Okay. Yeah. Damn. I know, right? Boy, yeah. that made me feel old in this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 40. Hell yeah, 40. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. get on up there. Still working though, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Making yeah. moves. Yeah. Man, I tell man, my mama no. She told me, she said, boy, you're going to work to the day you die. <laughs> Oh, they say the day I was just telling my girl the other day. They say the day you start working is the day you start aging. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, it's a fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that is a fact, man. And yeah. me personally, I love the work, and I, and I'm gonna tell you this story before you know. And I I think I've touched on it um on a, a podcast before. Um, I worked so much because you know I was homeless at one time. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying like living out of my car for like four months and everything. And I think it's, it's always a light bulb that pops up in your head. It's a certain point. It's like, how can I put it? It's like, um, I don't know how are old. How old are y'all when the twin towers fell? I wasn't even born yet. Two thousand one. I wasn't old too. Damn. <laughs> you was like two. Okay, okay. So y'all, y'all can't elaborate. But it's sometimes events happen where you know where you was exactly. Yes. You know what I'm saying, that. and what time it was, and everything. It's like time stands still. And going back to the twin towers, you know, I was in class, and I, you know, I remember. And you, when we was in high school, they used to have the, like the TV for the announcements and shit like that. We used to have like our own um, station with the school and shit like that. So I remember when the Twin Towers fell, I knew exactly you know where I was, what happened. And then when I got home, I was like, damn, this is bad because it's on every single fucking channel. But need to say that moment where I knew where I wanted to work and never give up, as I was staying out of my car, and I had a little bit of gas. And everything, and I was like three months behind on my, um, on my rent payment. You know, not rent payment, but my car payment and everything. So I was moving my car from spot to spot because the t- um, your repo man is great about you know getting your shit three in the morning or real early when you ain't up yet. <laughs> Hell yeah, taking your shit. So mm-hmm. I would move in different spots. But make a long story short, <clears throat> I was in <laughs> in the car. And I was like, it was cold too. That's when we had that blizzard back in the day, like, you know, when this happened. <clears throat> so I turned my car on to get some heat and I fell asleep, accidentally fell asleep. And I woke up cold. Was, the car was all freezing cold, freezing cold. So I told God, I said, man, if you get me out of this shit, I never go back, bro. And so that was my, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going I'm to work. I don't care if I have to dig a fucking ditch. That's I, dope. I'm that's a that's a, yeah, real, that's a testimony. Yeah, for real. That's a testimony, bro. That's a yeah, testimony. Yeah. I, I'm going to give a quick story, too, to relate to that. I'm only 22, but I feel like yeah. I got a son. Like I feel like I just matured a lot quicker than the average 22-year-old. Though. Yeah, fast. So, uh, make a long story short, in 2022... <laughs> I lost my uncle, like one of my closest uncles, the main reason I got into music, my Uncle Corey. I talk about him all the time. Everybody already know. Yeah. But um I lost him. That was just the, the the beginning of a of a of a, a dark time for me. I lost him. I ended up losing my job a month later and I lost mm. my car a month after that. Mm. And then after that, I was with my mom. We got kicked out of the place we was in a month after that. So it was like four months. I lost job, car, home, and uncle all in like four months. Damn. So I went into an eight month stretch where I just I wasn't working. I was getting like unemployment. I didn't have a car. Like it was fucked up. A lot of people didn't know that, but I w- it was fucked up. And I s- I had a similar conversation, just like praying every night. And I was getting big on my faith, and that's why I can't n- nobody can tell me anything about my religion or my faith because mm-hmm. I know. So yeah. yeah, 
long story short, though, I told God, same thing. If you get me out of this, I'm working. I'm never going back. I'm betting every last dollar on myself that I got. Yes. And I'm going to go serious with my music. Even if it's not, I'm, if I got to work a job to fund it, which is what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. do like you feel me? I'm doing yeah. it. Oh, yeah. And I lied to you not. A month later, I got the job I wanted. I turned 21, got the job I wanted, mm -hmm. started working, and it ain't been down since. I done got two, three cars, my own crib, yes. me and my girl, like, straight, like, not worry about nothing. That's dope. So that's my testimony as to why I have unwavering faith in God as well as I think everybody else should as well, it's, it's mm. especially from your testimony too. Yeah, facts. Yeah. I appreciate that, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. Okay, anything y'all want to add, man? You know what I'm saying? You want to add, man? No, I'm good, man. I'm okay. Just, yeah, I'm good. I just want to say one last thing. I kind of just said it. Bet every last dollar on yourself, man. Facts. Don't get comfortable being comfortable. You need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You got to do what you don't want to do to get where you want to go. Yes, sir. That's facts. That's I'm trying to fact. tell you, like I said earlier, each level is a new devil. Know where you content at, but honestly, I wouldn't even be content. Never be content, man. Keep doing what works for you, and also don't let nobody tell you what you can't do. That's my message. I go by MKB, and I appreciate you having me, Medley. Oh, yeah. Any, anytime, bro. Anytime. Anytime. And like I said, when you came in, I saw that height. I automatically went in the- Basketball. Everybody. He <laughs> did play, though. Yeah, I, I automatically did. went in the- <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm, I'm finna do this nigga outside, so I'm finna ask him. Yeah, I don't really want to see me, y'all. <laughs> Yo, I'm trying to tell you. Like, nah, for real. Like, and, and that's the way it used to be, like, when we was in high school, bro. And I always go back to this. Like, I got two state teams, two state titles with Thomasville High School. Yeah, yeah, I'm nice now. Like, don't let, I, tell, I tell niggas, don't let the hype fool you now. Don't let the hype fool you. Yeah, but every time I see a tall nigga, I say, nigga, I'd do your ass right now, nigga. Looking up at I'd do your ass, nigga. His favorite thing to say, this nigga ain't like, That's why I be telling oh, niggas, yeah. I still got that competitive edge, man. Not like, really. yeah, yeah, man. And one thing about these young niggas, man, it's like people don't play ball no more for fun. Like niggas be arguing like hell. Want to kill your ass? Yeah. Over that was back in the day with the old heads. Too, right? Yeah, oh, nah. Man, we prison did. ball and shit. That's yeah, the charge generation. Shit. Dude, we play prison we ball and shit. shit. We're watching people play, and we stop for like ten minutes. You know, it's all ball. It's like... Yeah, arguing about ball <laughs> like, for an hour. Yeah. Arguing about ball at this point in the game. It's dark. Go home. It's over like, with. Exactly. Exactly. It's man. over with. Hell yeah! But I appreciate y'all coming, man. For real, for real. Anytime, yeah, this, man. This, that quote that I'm gonna definitely live by that. For real. Yes, sir. For every level, there's a new devil. That that's that's hard, bro. For like, sure. I've never heard that before. That's something you came up with, or you? Nah, this yeah. is something that was taught to me growing up through my experience. Not yeah. nothing I came up with. Yeah, I've never heard that. That's that's <laughs> dope. Yeah, that's, that's that wisdom shit right there. Yeah, for that's sure, up, man. Definitely. Okay, I appreciate you, man. For yes, real sir. Man. No problem. All right, this is Robert Medley coming straight out of the Medley Media Podcast, the dopest podcast in North Carolina. Yeah, I said it, the dopest podcast in North Carolina. And as always, pull up, shoot, edit, repeat. Peace. <laughs>